Aloha, it's me, Dashima, and I am here at the beautiful One World Ayurveda in Bali, Indonesia today. And I'm really happy and excited to share with you a yoga practice sequence for, to strengthen and relieve any pain and discomfort from your lower back and from your whole back in general. This is a huge point of pain and discomfort for many people, and it does not have to be. And that's what I'm excited to share with you today, a way that you can heal and alleviate the discomfort, pain, even if it's been chronic in your life so far, or maybe it just comes here and there, and it's triggered by certain circumstances or situations. Either way, you don't have to live with pain, and I'm going to share with you a sequence that you can practice either regularly or a few times per week. If you could do it every day, it would work even faster for you and relieve all the pain from your back. Just to give you a little background about myself, I'm a yoga teacher, an author, a public speaker, and I've been teaching yoga for the past 13 years. I have worked with many different people from children to the elderly to people in hospital settings and everything in between. I've certified yoga teachers internationally for the past decade and I'm here now just to give back all of the wisdom and information that I've gained from my lifetime of learning and sharing this really powerful and ancient practice of yoga. And just to give you a little story about my own personal journey, when I was 18 years old, I was hit by a car while I was riding my bicycle, and it was going 45 miles per hour. That impact caused a huge destruction to my spine, and from that, I ended up developing scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, and a lot of chronic pain in my neck and my back resulted from that experience. So when I went to the doctors, they recommended chiropractic. And they said there's really nothing you can do to heal your spine. Once it's crooked, you can't really bring it back to straight. So at first I believed them, of course. I was you know, just believing the, the doctors. And then years went by and I had a lot of pain in my body. And the grace of God led me to discover a yoga teacher who had healed her spine with yoga. And when I learned about this, it gave me hope. And that's what I want to give to you. And as a result of that specific encounter, I went on a healing journey. And through a process of discovery and practice and disciplined action, I was able to completely realign my spine back to perfect alignment. And I have no more issues with scoliosis and actually no more pain in my spine or body at all. So I'm so profoundly grateful for this powerful practice and I am really excited to be able to share this gift with you so that you can also relieve pain from your body and from your life permanently. So if you have any friends that also may be suffering from pain in their back, uh, lower back, mid back, upper back or the neck, please feel free to share this video with your friends and so that we can spread the healing love. So in order to get started today, you really don't need much uh, in the way of equipment. We just need a yoga mat. Here I have two mats because I'll be demonstrating from different angles today to be able to help you to see the various pr um, poses, which I also call asana, in the practice, and it will help you to get the most out of this experience. What you do need is a little bit of time, so I'm so happy that you're joining me today, and if you want in the future, you can re-watch this video. Do it with us every single day if you can, or whenever you get a chance, and whenever you have the time. And with this practice, you will see tremendous transformation in your health, your well-being, the way that you feel, your happiness, your joy, and your ability to experience the fullness that this life has to offer for you. Okay, so let's get started. Now, in general, I'll just explain really quickly, one of the reasons that we get lower back pain, which is what we'll start with, we'll start with the lower back and then we'll go all the way up to the upper back and the neck. The reason most people get lower back pain is a couple different reasons. First of all, weakness in the core. So when your core is weak, and generally when we think of the core, we think of the belly. But the core is the full midsection. So we have the front, which is the abs, we usually, and then the side, which are your obliques, and then your back, which is your lower back. So we want to strengthen all of this so that we can create a really powerful, 
stable and strong, what we call like a kind of a girdle, right? That supports you and prevents you from experiencing pain. The pain generally is coming from either strain of the back and the muscles being strained because they're not strong enough and so they're weak and they're also tight and this causes pain. The other thing that causes pain is compression. So compression of the vertebra of the spine and this comes from slouching and improper posture and this is, happens over a, many years it starts to develop and then all of a sudden you have chronic pain. So we can alleviate and reduce and eliminate a lot of this for you, if not all of it, with just some very simple and powerful practices. So let's get started. Find a comfortable seated position. If it's difficult for you to sit like this, you could put a cushion or a block under your hips. You want to be comfortable. As long as your knees are below the hips, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable. So if your hips are tight, you're going to feel that straining. So you want to make sure that you're not straining yourself in this practice. Okay. Now, just to get started, we'll start with a few spinal undulations. So with the hands on the knees and the shoulders are relaxed and back, as you inhale, lift your chest and look up to the sky. As you exhale, round the, the spine, chin goes into the chest. We'll do this three times. Inhale, lift the heart, your head looks up. Exhale, round the spine, chin into the chest. One more time, inhale and look up. Shoulders really rolling down and back as you lift your heart and exhaling round your spine. And the shoulders come forward, you press your spine to the wall behind you. And now come back to the center. And now just walking your hands forward here, see if you can just lower down onto the forearms. If that's too difficult, you can keep your elbows nice and straight. But just feeling that length. So you want to tilt your tailbone back and lengthen the spine from the lower lumbar. And if you can, go down to the forearms, or you could even extend the arms and lower your forehead all the way down to the mat. So just feeling the length from the lower back. And then inhaling back to the center, walk your hands back in. And now we'll do a little spinal twist, seated spinal twist. Take the right hand behind you, left hand to the right knee. Inhale, lengthen the spine and lift the chest. Exhale, twist and look over your right shoulder. Three times, inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. One more, inhale, and exhale. And back to the center, we'll do the other side. Right hand to the left knee, left hand behind you. Inhale, lengthen, lift the chest. Exhale, twist, and look over your left shoulder. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Once more, inhale, and exhale. And back to the center, beautiful. Now we're gonna straighten the legs. So the legs go straight, and this is a really good test for you. If you have really tight hamstrings, you're gonna feel a straining in your lower back here, and it's gonna be difficult for you to sit without like kind of a straining in the back. If that's the case for you, put a block or a cushion under your hips, elevate your hips, and that will alleviate some of that straining. But just opening up the hamstrings is the first step. So you want to lengthen the spine, and extending the legs straight, see if you can reach towards your toes. If the toes don't come easily to you, it's okay, but don't round the back as you reach. This is improper. So you don't want to be like this. You want to be with the straight spine and then reaching forward like this. This is a huge and important point because most people are rounding and this is straining and it's not helping, okay? So when you reach for your feet, Reach for your feet, pull the toes in, and keep the spine nice and long. If you need to use a strap here, this is a perfect opportunity. Put the strap around your feet and pull your toes in towards you, just like this. And then coming back up to the center. Now this is a pose we call staff pose. You wanna have your hands right by your hips, and the spine nice and long and straight, and the legs straight like this. Toes are flexed in towards you, and the knees are flat towards the ground, and the spine is long, lower belly pulling in and up, and the palms are pushing down, chin slightly down. Staff pose is kind of like your perfect sitting posture if your legs were straight, and you wanna get nice long spine, lower belly pulled in, and feel the length of the spine here. Nice deep breath, inhale, reach up, 
and then reach towards your toes. So once again, keep the spine nice and straight, never the rounding, always the lengthening, always the lifting of the heart. Beautiful breath and release. Beautiful. And now we'll go into Janu Shirsasana. So just bending your right knee and the left leg stays straight, just like this. This is a wonderful posture for your lower back and it will stretch out your side as, as well. So there's two variations we'll do today. First option, and you might want the strap here. So the first option, inhale and reach up, rotate your torso and lower your hands towards the extended leg as you drop the inside shoulder down to the mat. So you should feel this in the lower back. You might feel it in your side body as well and just breathing into your lower back here. Nice, deep, cleansing breath. And now in inhaling, take the right arm up to the sky, and then if we're gonna stretch the side body here, reach the right arm over the right ear towards the left foot. If it's available to you, you can take the left hand to the right knee and the right hand to the left toes. So just stretching the side body here. Nice deep breath, lengthen the side. We'll just do three breaths. You could hold this longer if it feels amazing. Stick with it. Inhale back to the center, and now we'll switch sides. So take the left knee, bend it, extend the right leg straight. Same thing on both sides. You always have to do both sides, balance it out, right? So inhaling, open the arms wide, rotate your torso to the right side this time, and exhaling, fold to the right. Drop the left shoulder down to the ground, and open up the left side body. Deep breath into your lower back. Three breaths here, inhaling, release. Left arm goes up to the sky. You can take the right hand to the left knee, left hand to the right toes, lengthen the left side. Deep cleansing breath. And release, inhaling back to the center. Beautiful. Now take the feet together, and we'll go into a butterfly position. So butterfly opens up the hips, and the inner thighs, and also the low back a little bit. So this is really nice and important because as we open up all the lower body, you're gonna to start to see a lot of less straining on your low back. A lot of the muscles are all interconnected, of course. So as you loosen up one area, you get relief in every area. So let's go for it. Bring the feet together and the knees apart, and you want to try to open your feet like a book. So you're going to open your feet so the soles are going up to the sky. Nice deep breath, lengthen, and as you exhale, bow forward and just press your knees down to the ground and your chest down towards your feet. If you can, bring your forehead all the way to the ground and breathe into your hips, into your inner thighs, all the way into your lower back. Beautiful. Inhale back up. Now bring your knees together and hug your knees. You can round your spine in this pose and forehead to the knees. Just take a breath. Beautiful. And then back to the center. Now we're going to do table position. So table position will actually open up. It will strengthen your low back and open up your shoulders here and strengthen your glutes as well. So this is gonna to help to build some strength. Throughout this practice, we'll be doing strength and flexibility practices and so that you can create a balanced health for your body. Feet are hip distance apart, knees are apart. Nice deep breath here. As you exhale, lift your hips as high as you can and lay your head back. So just breathing into your lower back, into your spine, into your shoulders. and slowly release. We're gonna do three times. I'll show you a few different variations here. So that first option was just regular table. Second option, lifting the hips now. And then this time, if you want, you can look towards your knees if that's more comfortable or if your neck feels comfortable, you can lay it back. Um, but then just taking the left leg up and then lower the left foot onto your right knee as you lift your hips as high as you can to the sky. Use your strength in your back. 
in your glutes, in your legs. Deep breath here. And release. Beautiful. And now we'll do the other side. So same thing here. Table position. Right leg up this time. Bend the knee. The foot goes to the left knee. Hips are high. Lay your head back. Deep cleansing breath. Three breaths here. Keep lifting your hips. Lowering that right knee. And release. And lower back down. Beautiful. Now we'll do one more variation. And this one is a little bit more challenging. So we'll just lift the hips. Table position again. Head can lay back if it's comfortable. Now the left leg straight up. And if you want, bending the elbows, lower the hips and lift. Lower and lift. One more. And release. We'll do the other side. So right leg up. Lower and lift. Lower and lift. Last one. And release. Ah, hug your legs. Beautiful. Forehead to the knees. And take a few breaths into your spine. Round your spine. Now this is a really beautiful one. Just sitting with the knees bent. Take the hands to the knees here. And then rounding the spine. Chin into the chest. And then lifting the heart. Round the spine. Lift the heart. Exhale. And inhale. Beautiful. Okay. Now, extending the legs straight again. We'll take the right knee, bend it. Step it across the left leg. Right hand goes behind you. And just pull the right knee towards the left shoulder. So just hugging it in close. And the right hand behind you. If it's too difficult to get your hand nice and flat, you can use a block here. But you want to try to get a nice straight spine. This should stretch your low back. If you have a tight low back, this will be a, a great deal of a stretch. If you want to take it a little deeper, we can go into a deeper twist. So the twist, you take the elbow, the left elbow, to the outside of the right knee as you twist and look over your right shoulder. So nice deep breath. And exhale, twist. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Exhale. Beautiful. Now, we'll, if you want, you can go into an even deeper variation, which is the bind. So you dig your right arm through. This is for a little more advanced option. And then you bind your hands together behind you and twist just like that. And release. And a little counter twist to the left just to release. And we'll do the other side. So the right leg goes straight. And we'll bend the left knee, left foot across, hug the knee into your chest, nice deep breath, long spine, left hand behind you as you inhale, lengthen, exhaling, twist. Three times, inhale, exhale. One more, exhale. Beautiful. Now if you want to do the other variations, you can go a little deeper. Take the elbow to the outside of the knee. You could extend your hand to your foot and lengthen and twist. The other option that I showed on the other side is to bind. So you take the arm through and you hold the opposite hand. Nice deep breath, lengthening, exhaling, twist. And release. And both hands go to the right and back to the center and release the legs. All right, so now let's go into some different type of practice. It's going to be a little bit more strength oriented now that we're all warmed up and loosened up. So coming onto your hands and knees, put the hands directly under the shoulders and the knees directly under the hips. So first off, just starting with cat-cow position, open up the spine, take a nice deep breath, look up to the sky, exhale, round your spine, chin into the chest, tuck your tailbone under. Inhale, look up, exhale, round. We'll go one more time. You should feel a really nice release in your spine, 
as you're undulating through the vertebra here and then back to the center. Beautiful. Now, as you inhale, take the left leg back and if it's available to you, take the right arm forward. So this is called spinal balancing. So spinal balancing, we want to traction the arm and the leg away from each other while grounding and using the core strength here to stabilize. If you need to tuck the back toes under, if that will help, feel free to go for it. So just reaching, and then as you exhale, we'll take the elbow to the knee and curl it in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, curl it in. We'll do five. This is three. Four. Inhale. And five. And release. And go with the other side. So the right leg extends back, left arm forward, lengthening, grounding into the palm, the knee, the long spine, crown of the head, tractioning away from the back knee. Nice deep breath. Exhaling, curl it in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Last one. Beautiful. Now, let's do a little glute and lower back strengthening practice here. So going with the same type of movement, but just lifting the left leg. The knee is bent. Palms are under the shoulders. Nice deep breath. And we'll pulse it. So press the foot up to the sky for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now I'll take the left knee to the left shoulder. Exhale, left knee, left shoulder, and extend back, and we'll do 10. This is nine, eight more. Move with the breath. Seven, six, five, four, Last three, last two, last one. And lower the left knee. Now we'll do the right side. So right leg back, bend the knee, and pulse it up for 10. We're strengthening the glutes here, which will help support the lower back strength as well. This is five more. Four, three, two, last one. And now extending back and crunch it into the right. 10 like this. Nine more, eight, seven, six, five, last four, three more, last two, last one, and lower the knees. Now we're just going to take a little rest in a child pose. So sitting onto your heels and reach forward, forehead to the mat. Relax. Take some deep breaths into your lower back. When you inhale, expanding all the muscles in the low back and all along your spine. And as you exhale, just imagine all the tension just melting away. Just a few more breaths like this. And now coming back into the hands and knees. So we'll do a little bit of a spinal twist. We call this thread the needle. So on hands and knees, inhale the left arm out to the left. And exhale, left arm threads through between the hand and the knee on the right side. And you lower your shoulder down here. So first option, if you just take your right palm, press it into the, into the mat, and twist your spine up to the sky. You should feel a really nice release in your lower back. Breathing with it. If you want to go deeper here, you can take the right leg back and drop the right knee to the left side of the left knee. And it, you, can even, <laughs> you can even take the hands, if you want to go even deeper, into a prayer and twist to the right. So those will deepen your twist and you'll feel nice release in that left side of the lower back. Nice deep breath. Feel the release just melting into it. And slowly coming out of this, back to the hands and knees, cat pose round the spine, chin into the chest, and back to the center. We'll do the other side. Right arm goes out to the side, thread the needle through, the right arm through the left, drop the shoulder down, 
Your head can go down to the mat too. If you want to go deeper, you can take the left knee back and over to the right side of the right knee. Nice deep breath. If you want to even go deeper, twist to the left. Beautiful deep breath. Releasing the tension from the spine and slowly release. Coming back on the hands and knees. Knees under shoulders, exhale round the spine. And inhale, lift the heart. Beautiful. Now we're going to come into puppy pose. So puppy pose is really nice. It opens up the upper back and the shoulders. Drop the chest down. If you need a block or a cushion under your chest, it's okay. You're aiming to get your chest and your chin to the mat so that you can open up the shoulders and the upper back here. It also relieves tension from the lower back. It's really relaxing. Take about three to five breaths here at least. Beautiful. Coming back into your hands and knees. And now we'll just extend the legs straight back into a plank position. So plank position is really strengthening for your whole body. Pull, pull the lower belly in, nice straight spine, shoulders above the wrists. And we'll take the knees down, chest down, and chin down. So we call this inchworm pose. And then lower to your belly and inhale, cobra position. So roll the shoulders back. If cobra is too difficult for your spine, then go with sphinx pose. Sphinx pose is really a great alternative. It's really nice on your low back. And you might just want to rock side to side. If you feel a lot of tension in your low back, always start slow. You don't want to tweak something and cause more, more pain. So you just want to go at your own physical ability and work your way up to more advanced poses with more practice. You'll notice with time, everything will feel better and better. Okay, another really cool pose is called walrus, or some people call this sea lion. But basically, it's where you open the arms wider than the shoulders, and the fingers are angled out, and you drop the shoulders back, and it's kind of like cobra, but it's a wider version. You just can relax into it. You could even drop your chest down a little more than usual. And slowly release back down. From here, just make a little pillow with your hands for a moment. Rock your hips side to side. So you should feel a really re nice release in your low back. Beautiful. And from here, we're going to do a few lower back strengthening practices. So the first one, this is in the family of a pose called locust. So basically, you can keep your hands down in the kind of resting position like this, or all the way, your head on the floor, and or your chin forward. But basically, we're just going to lift one leg at a time. Lift your right leg up as high as you can, and hold here for three to five breaths, strengthening your lower back, all the glutes, all the way down the back of the body. And then lower, and then the left side. So lift the left leg, keep the right foot rooted into the mat. Nice deep breath here. Grounding into the palms will help. And then lower. Now we're going to do both legs at once. Lift the legs as high as you can, and keep your chest down. So you're strengthening the lower back here. And you can even flutter the legs. If it feels comfortable for you, flutter the legs, strengthen the back and release. And the last one we'll do in this sequence is called Superman Pose. So Superman Pose is where you're going to lift the upper back and the lower body. So like this, like you're flying and you're, you can even flutter the legs if you want. You really strengthen that lower back. Feel the whole back body working. Nice deep breath and release. <sighs> Should feel really like you're doing something here. You should feel the strength in your body. Now we're going to step it up a bit and go into bow pose. So bow pose, you bend your knees. If you can reach your ankles, first step. If you can't reach the ankles right off, you might use a strap here. See if you can hold the ankles. The fingers are facing, like hands are facing in, so the thumbs are down. And then as you inhale, see if you can lift your toes up to the sky, pressing your feet back and up, chest lifting. Use the strength in the back of your body to lift your heart to the sky. Nice deep breath. Three to five breaths here. And release. Ah. And 
Now take the hands under the shoulders and press back into child's pose. So sitting on your heels, rest your forehead to the mat and take a few breaths. Just relax. If you want to rock side to side, feel free. Deep cleansing Ujjayi breath here. And coming back to the center. Beautiful. So now coming all the way up to seated. And then all the way to kneeling on your knees. So in the kneeling position, you want to have your feet and the knees in alignment. Knees are lined up with the hips. Everything in alignment. That's the key to life. Everything in alignment. So we're going to do a little bit of a camel position. This is to stretch the lower back, but it's also strengthening for the core as well. So the key here, first option, you want to have your hands on your lower back. Fingers can be facing down the spine if your wrists are tight, or if you have a little more openness in the wrist, the fingers facing up the spine. I'm going to use the heel of your hand to press the sacrum down and lengthen the spine as you lift the chest and gently lay your head back, opening your heart to the sky. Take a few breaths here. And inhale back to the center and release. Now we're going to do three variations of camel. That was variation one. Variation two, if you have a little more flexibility is great. You can tuck the toes. If this is too difficult to reach the floor, we can use a block here. And you can put the block in between your feet. But uh, otherwise, see if you can reach your ankles because this is going to help you tremendously through the practice. So reaching for your ankles, tuck your tailbone, lengthen your spine, nice deep breath, lift your heart. And breathe into your heart. Open your spine, open your heart to the sky. Inhale back to the center. So lifting back up is a nice strengthening for the low back and the core. We'll do one more variation of camel pose. And camel pose is such a great spinal empowering practice because it really does strengthen you, but it does require a lot of awareness because if you have any weakness or tightness in your lower back and if you don't maintain your awareness, you could tweak something. So you don't want to do that. So instead, really practicing awareness and knowing your body. If your hands are on your lower back, really support your back with your hands and don't just flop into it, okay? It's really important. Okay, the next one is a variation called praying camel. If you want to try, it's a little more advanced, but you're just going to tuck the tailbone, lengthen the spine, lift the chest, and lay your head back without the support of your hands. So this is going to strengthen your spine, and then coming back up to the center, and lowering all the way down into your child's pose. And then spread the knees in your child's pose, so you can really drop your chest between your thighs, breathing into your lower back here. Beautiful. Now coming back up. So the next practice is really strengthening for your upper back as well. And you'll start with your forearms on the mat. We're moving into a pose called dolphin pose. So the palms are shoulder distance, elbows are shoulder distance grounding into the palms, tuck your toes, and press your chest back towards your thighs. So you're coming into like a downward dog, but on the elbows. And as you squeeze your elbows towards each other and press your chest back towards your thighs, breathe into your shoulders, your upper back, tilt the tailbone up to the sky and keep lifting, lengthening the spine. Breathe into your spine. And from here, lower back to the knees, and now we'll press back into a regular downward dog. So tailbone is lifted. You can bend one knee at a time, just open up the hamstrings. We really want to loosen up all the hamstrings here because that's one of the greatest causes of lower back tension. So just breathing into the back body, bending the knees, pedaling the feet. Nice, deep cleansing breath. Lifting your heels, you can bend the knees together. Now press the chest back towards the thighs. Open up your upper back and shoulders, breathing into it.
and lower the heels back down. Nice long spine, beautiful breath. On your next inhale, lift the left leg up to the sky as high as you can. And on your exhale, we'll take the left knee all the way into the center of the chest. Curl it in, chin to the knee. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee, center of the chest, chin to knee. Exhale, up and back. One more time. Exhale, curl it in, chin to the knee. Use your core strength. And inhale, up and back. On the next one, we'll take the left knee forward all the way into pigeon. So pigeon pose is awesome for your lower back and for your hips. So you want to try to get your left shin parallel to the front of the mat. If it's difficult, use the block here. You can take the block and put it under your left hip if the left leg is forward, and that will allow you to go deeper into the pose without straining anything. So this is a key. You want to find ways to make the practice more comfortable. And that way, you can stay a little longer and get more benefits out of it. So if you want to feel less of a stretch, you'll bring the foot in closer to you. And if you want a deeper stretch, then you'll bring the foot farther away. Either way, you want to have the hips squared to the front of the mat. And nice deep breath as you lengthen, lift the chest. Deep breath here. And as you exhale, just walk your palms forward. You can come onto your forearms. You can make a pillow with your hands if you want. Deep cleansing breath. And coming back to the center. I always like to hold pigeon a long time. If you can hold it longer than three to five breaths, stay with it. The benefits get exponentially better the longer you can stay. So now, just to open up the front of the hip flexors here in the quadricep, we'll reach the right hand back for the right foot and pull the foot in. If it's difficult to reach that back foot, use a strap. Just a strap around the foot, pull the foot close. Nice deep breath, just like this. And release. We're going to tuck the toes of the right foot. Inhale the left leg up and back in a downward dog and then all the way back up. Big hip circles, just let the blood flow freely. And lower the left foot down. Inhale the right leg up. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Right leg up. And then right knee, center of the chest, chin to the knee. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, chin to the knee. Inhale. And last one. Exhale. Use your core here. Inhale, right leg up and back. And we're coming into pigeon on the right side. So the right knee comes forward. Slide the left knee back. So with the right knee between your hands, you can adjust accordingly. You can put the block under your hip. You want to have your hips square to the front of the mat. And if you need to, you can either pull the foot in closer to you to get less of a stretch, or if you want a deeper stretch, then the, the foot farther away from your, your groin area. So now, finding that comfortable sweet spot, you want to have a nice long spine, beautiful breath, lift your heart, and exhaling, walk your hands forward here. Down to the forearms, or you can come all the way down and make a pillow with your hands. You could also put a block under your forehead here, and this will help you to feel more comfortable as you rest into this pose. So you can have a block under your hip and under your forehead, and just get comfortable. You want to try to hold this for at least, you know, three to five breaths is the minimum. If you could hold three to five minutes, you're going to see tremendous results. So the longer you can stay in each of these practices, the more powerful your results are going to be. Nice deep cleansing breath, really breathing into your lower back and your hips and releasing any tension, any stress, any pain and discomfort from your body with every single exhale. Inhaling, I am. Exhale, relaxed. And just letting go more and more with every breath. And when you're complete, you can come back onto the palms 
and we'll reach your left hand back for the left foot. If you need the block, I mean the strap here for the foot, feel free. Pull that back foot in towards you. Even if you can just bring it in a little bit, then just open up the quadricep and the, and the hip flexors on the left side. Use the right hand to stabilize yourself and release the back foot. Palms under the, under the shoulders here, tuck the left toes. We're gonna inhale the right leg straight up and back like we did on the other side. Three beautiful hip circles just to let the blood flow freely. Bend the knee, circle it in, and extend back. One more time, bend, circle, and extend. And lower the right knee down. Beautiful, now lower down to the knees. And we're going to come into frog position. So frog position sort of opens up the hips and the inner thighs. So you want to spread the knees as wide as you can. And then walk your palms forward onto your forearms here. So if you want, you can use a block here or a cushion or anything you want. Otherwise, just stay on the forearms. You're just opening up into the inner thighs and the hips which is going to help. You need to work the contralateral muscle groups as well as the low back, and it all kind of works together here. So shifting your hips back and forward, back and forward. And if you want to, you can just rest in one of the positions just for a few breaths here. And coming back onto the hands and knees, tuck your toes, Bring your knees together and come into child's pose. You can have your hands by your side or extended child's pose with the arms extended forward. Deep cleansing breath into the back of your body. And slowly releasing and coming all the way back up. Now we're going to cross at the ankles and come to seated with the legs straight forward. So the legs straight forward back in our staff pose that we had earlier. Nice straight spine, deep breath, inhale, reach up, lengthen the spine, exhale, reach for your feet. And you wanna, if you want to, pull the sit cushions back so you have a little more lengthening from the lumbar so you can reach for your toes and gently fold forward and lengthen the spine. If you can't fold forward without rounding, then don't then just keep lengthening. And you can use the strap here, which I'll get one. This is a great pose for a strap. I always suggest people use the available props that you have because every little bit makes a difference. So if you can just pull the shoulders down and back, lengthening the spine, keep your hamstrings nice and straight and lower back along, nice deep breath here. Beautiful breath. And if you want to pull yourself close, go for it. And release. Nice. So now we're going to do a little core sequence. So bending the knees. First, we're just going to test it. Palms behind you. We'll see the strength of your core. You're going to lift the feet. So we're going into boat pose. Spine is nice and straight. You don't want to round the spine. If the spine is rounded, you're straining your back once again. So you want to keep the spine nice and straight. Even if you need to put the feet down to start. Fingers are facing the hips and the arms are straight. The feet are flat, hip distance apart. Nice long spine. Now from here, see if you can lift your knees up a little bit, your feet off of the ground, and then your legs 90 degrees. So just like this, nice deep breath. Use the strength in your core, deep breath here. If it's available to you, you can try to lift one leg up straight. Try the other leg now. Now try both legs. Both legs straight, keep grounding into the palms, straight spine, bend the knees. Now see if you can release your hands from the floor and just Reach for your toes. Keep the spine nice and straight and release. Ah. And now slide your hips towards your heels. And we'll just stretch your shoulders for a second. Squeeze your elbows together. Feet are hip distance. 
chin to the chest, keep lifting the heart to the sky. Beautiful, deep, cleansing breath. And release. Now hug your knees, chin into the knees, round the spine just for a breath here. Beautiful. Now we'll just slowly roll the spine down one vertebra at a time until you're all the way on your back. So the back is flat, the feet are hip distance apart, and your hands are by your sides. We're going to do a little bit of bridge pose for a moment. So bridge pose is really strengthening for the spine. Palms by the sides, feet hips distance apart, nice deep breath, and exhale, lift your hips to the sky. You want to squeeze your glutes a little, use the strength in your glutes, interlace your fingers, start to walk your shoulder blades together. If you need the support, you can use your hands to support your lower back. Another nice option here, if you have a lot of back pain, is to just use the block. So you can take the block directly under your uh, sacrum, and instead of using the muscles, you can use this as a release. So this is more restorative in the sense of it's not going to take much strength, but if you have a lot of back pain, this is going to feel really good. Even if you don't have back pain, it feels really amazing, but if you have back pain, it's really a relief. So you can try it with the block turned this way. If you want it lower, you could have it like this. If you have a lot of flexibility, you could raise it all the way up like this. So there's different options that you can use the block. So we'll start with the block for a moment. Most people will have it halfway down. You wanna have this directly under your sacrum between the lower lumbar. Nice deep breath. From here, we can try some ab core strengthening. So extend the right leg up and lift it up and lower. Lift and lower. So this is a nice way to use the strength in your back and your core while not straining yourself. So especially if you have lower back pain, this is the best option. So the right leg up and down. If you want, you can take it out to the side and in up, down, side, in, up, down. We'll try the other side. Left leg up. So you're grounding into this right foot, so you're nice and stable. Your palms are rooted as well. Left leg up and lower and lift. Use your core here. Lower belly engaged, moving with control. Lower and lift, just like that. Down and to the side, in, and up, down, side, in, up. One more, down, side, in, up, and lower. Beautiful. Now, we'll try it without the block. So when you release the block, you're going to feel, it takes a lot more strength. So the palms by the sides, nice deep breath. Exhale, lift the hips. Use the strength in the back body. If you can, interlace your fingers, just walk your shoulder blades together, lift your hips up to the sky, breathe into your spine. From here, if you want to take it up a notch, left leg up, see if you can hold it up, nice strong legs, strong core, strong back, and lower. Try the other side, right leg up, Strength is in that left side now, breathing, and lower, and lower all the way. A little spinal twist, hug your knees into your chest. You can come into happy baby if you want, bringing the feet apart, knees down by the armpits, rocking side to side. This is a really nice way to give yourself a lower back massage, release any more tension you might have from your lower back. Inhaling back to the center. Hug the knees into the chest, rock side to side. And we'll do the other side. So now extending, you can either use both knees together or the right leg extends straight, the left knee drops to the ground, breathing into your lower back here. Nice deep breath.
And slowly release. And for your final pose today, just Shavasana, final relaxation. Let your legs relax straight down, feet wider than hip distance apart, palms by your sides, facing up. Lift your chest, squeeze your shoulder blades together a little so you get more space in your heart. And just inhaling deeply, exhaling completely. Allow your body to relax into a nice, comfortable Shavasana, final relaxation. As you visualize your back and your spine and your entire body completely in absolute bliss, only positive energy flowing freely through you as the breath moves in and out of your lungs. With every exhale, releasing any more tension and stress from your body and from your life. And slowly coming back to your awareness, wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch your arms, stretch your legs in the opposite direction. Place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. Just take a moment for your gratitude practice today. So many blessings to be grateful for. Thank God for this life, for your body, for your health, for your family, for the opportunity to live another day, growing, evolving, expanding into higher levels of happiness and joy in every moment. And then rolling onto your right side, you can just give yourself a hug, congratulate yourself for the work well done. And coming all the way up to seated, we'll complete our practice today. I want to thank you for joining us and uh, for me, thank you for joining me in this practice. I hope you stick with it. With disciplined effort and action, every day you will start to feel better and better in your body and your energy will improve and the flow of prana throughout you will increase and you will feel a joy that you have maybe never felt before as you release the old stuck energy that's causing pain and discomfort in your life and create space for a brand new experience in your body and in your life. I wish you many blessings on your journey. My name is Dashima and you can see my website in the link below as well as thank you to One World Ayurveda for this beautiful beautiful experience here in their amazing studio in Bali. I wish you so much love. Leave a comment if you have any questions and click like, share with your friends, practice every day and I'll see you again soon in the next session. Have a beautiful blessed day. Namaste.